So the minion wave is caught near where their tier 1 power is. Scylla is a little out of position. We might rotate onto her. She dashes through the wall. She's getting pushed towards us. We're going to rotate behind her. We throw down our honey. We throw down our two. We get the pick. Horus is here. Their team's here. We're going to just keep firing shots. It doesn't look like that any of them are focusing us right now. King Arthur, we're going to go ahead and ult him. There's a double. Mulan ults in. She does not hit us with the knockup. That's a triple. We're going to go ahead and push the horse. We get the slow off onto him. Unfortunately, our ultimate is on cooldown because that cripple would be very helpful when trying to go after this horse. What a do, Scooby Doo, it's your boy Shiny B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Amus and Cap as Carrie. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together to reduce the smite learning curve. If you are a returning viewer, these stats for this game will be posted at the end. I have been notified that I can turn down the audio of the music volume, which is a setting I completely forgot about. Yeah. So not in this game, but hopefully in future games, I will have the music volume down quite a bit, so that way you can hear me talk and you can hear the gameplay. So let's go ahead and go over Amus and Cabs kit. Amus and Cabs 1 is going to summon a beehive. This beehive is going to have a range, and while AMC is with inside that range, he's going to heal. He's going to get increased attack speed, and he's also going to get increased movement speed. AMC's second ability is a line attack where he summons a swarm of bees to go forward. This ability does a lot of damage and can really smack once you have some power stacked with you. Then AMC's three, he's going to summon some honey and put it on the ground. Oh no, so we have two people trying to invade us. Horus is already on us. We are going to do some wiggling. We get cursed. We're going to have to pop our beads, try to get a little bit of extra movement speed. So we look like we are in a bad position. It looks like they're going to try to keep going for our purple. I'm going to loop around, see if that can put me in a better position. So they're right here. We're going to throw our one off, or our two off. We're able to secure the purple. Thanks to the Fafnir Hand of the God, we're going to move our way over, see if we can't get this kill onto this Horus. Take a lot of damage, we're going to hide behind the Fafnir. We're going to wiggle around a little bit, try to avoid this Kronos. We throw our two off. We're able to get the first blood, that's going to be an additional 500 gold in our pocket. And Newell is able to rotate over, and that is two kills for our team. Very nice, great start to the game. They tried to invade, and it failed miserably. So now we have the advantage. And that means that their purple is open. So we're going to have lane pressure, and we might even be able to invade and take their purple here. So AMC's third ability is Honey. Whenever he places it on the ground, if any part of it is within the distance of his beehive, the bees are going to swarm to the Honey. The Honey's going to apply a 20% slow to the enemy, and it's also potentially going to apply the bees to the enemy. So AMC's passive is whenever he damages somebody with the wax, they're going to get swarmed by the bees and get damaged every 4 seconds. Whenever you land a basic attack, the duration of these bees are going to be extended. And with AMC's ultimate, he's going to shoot his stinger forward in a line attack, crippling any enemies that it hits, and it's also going to cause the bees to swarm onto them. Missing a lot of basic attacks on the horse, probably could have gotten a kill there if we didn't miss so many. So the cool thing about AMC's ultimate is that if you kill somebody with it, or if after 3 seconds they walk away, the stinger will fall on the ground for 4 seconds, and if you can pick it up, you're going to reduce your cooldown by like 80%. So instead of having to wait like a full minute, you only have to wait around 16 seconds to use your ultimate again. Because of this, AMC has a lot of damage potential. If you could really use your ultimate every 16 seconds and continue picking it up, there's going to be a very few amount of gods that can match that damage. So in terms of the build, we're going to be going into Hunter's Blessing, and then we're going to be going into Transcendence. Transcendence is going to provide us a lot of mana and a lot of power once we get it fully stacked. So one of the issues with AMC is it feels like he kind of burnt mana pretty quickly. 
and with his second ability he has 80% power scaling on it. So if you build some power, your second ability is going to really smack. We're getting pushed here. We're going to try to see if there's anything we can do. They're both pretty weak. We might be able to get a pick here. We miss our basic. Fenrir is able to get a kill onto the Kronos. But it looks like the horse is going to be able to get away. So we use our two to clear the wave. We, oh, we have two people on us. Yep. Uh, there was not a whole lot we could do there. We probably needed a call out, and if there was a call out, we missed it. So that was a little unfortunate. But we have enough for the ninja tab eye, which we're going to go ahead and pick up, and that's going to increase our attack speed a little bit. So with AMC's bees, or his hives, you can only place up to six hives at a time. So we're going to throw some along the way to lane. That way whenever we pass it, if we have to go back to lane again, we'll get a little bit of movement speed along the way. And that should help us get there before our enemy. So it looks like it's just a 1v1 against Kronos right now. We're going to throw our hive down. Fenrir is rotating in. We're trying to stay within the range of our hive. Fafnir misses his stuff. We're able to get some good damage. We throw our ult off. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to pick that up. But if we were to be able to pick that up, we would reduce our cooldown by 80% on our ultimate. So instead of it being an 80 second cooldown, it would be like a 16 second cooldown. And we are able to get the Kronos with our line attack, thanks to the Fenrir kind of pressuring him and causing him to strafe into our ability. So we're going to clean up this wave while our wave pushes. We pretty much just proxied right there. So if you ever hear somebody say proxying a wave, what they mean is they're going in between their tier 1 and tier 2 tower to destroy the upcoming wave. So that way your wave doesn't meet the enemy wave in the middle, and it can just march into power. Very vocal teammates this game, wanting to communicate a lot of things. So our purple is up, we're going to go ahead and snag this. This is going to reduce the enemy's protections and also increase our attack speed a little bit. So it looks like Kronos is going to have lane pressure. We use our three to apply a little bit of a slow and kind of just annoy him. We're going to go ahead and clear the wave. It looks like he pulled off to go for a jungle camp. So we get stunned. We're going to go ahead and beads. Missing a lot of basics. We use our two, but Kronos uses his ultimate. He thinks he has the advantage here, but we could totally burn him down. We're going to go to lane, make sure we don't miss any of the farm here. Put down a beehive. We are saving our two for whenever he comes out of the jungle. If he does not route the safe way, we should be able to get a pick here. He routes the safe way. So we're going to use our two on the wave. Push the minions in the tower and then start pressuring the tower. I don't know where he went, so I assume that he might be coming behind, but I actually think he is on his purple right now. He has no mana. So once we get this tower, we should be able to pressure him pretty pretty strongly. We get a basic off, we get our ult off, and we're able to clean it off. Clean it up with a, another basic. And unfortunately, we did not pick up the stinger again. But that is going to be alright. So we almost have enough money for the tier 3 version of Transcendence. We are just a little short. But it looks like we are going to back just to play it safe. We do have potions, but we were a little out of position. Your team has destroyed a left enemy tower. Looking back at it, it pro yeah, I don't know, because we would have to push up to their tier two tower to clear wave, and we're very weak. Or we were very weak, even if we popped mana and health potions. That would take a little bit of time to recover, and the enemy team could rotate on us. So I feel like we probably could have gotten away with trying to stick around for the full amount of gold for Transcendence. 
but the safer play was definitely two back. Your right tower is under attack. So we are just cruising around with all these beehives. Now we have enough money for some transcendence. I couldn't tell if he was rotating, so I'm trying to see if I can't match him. I see him back in lane, so I'm rotating back. Clearing wave with AMC is always super easy because his two does be all honest, the work. I don't think anyone's surprised. Once again, we think Kronos might have rotated, so we're kind of going into jungle just to see. We can't tell, so we're going to go back to lane. It could be that he's hitting camps. Either way, we should probably back. That would have been a perfect time to back to get transcendence. Your middle tower is under attack. So we're doing the full rotation. We're gonna throw down a beehive. Give us a little bit of movement speed and attack speed. We get a honey off, which is going to do a little bit of damage and apply slow. And that's all we're doing in that team fight. So it's time to go back to lane. We're gonna go ahead and clear this one oracle, so that way they respawn. So we're assuming that Kronos clears the wave, which means that if we go the safe way, we should be able to link up with the wave. We get him with the two. We have our beads. Two beads of Kronos' stun. He uses his ult. We're kind of just going to take that as a win. Now we're going to try to fight him. He does not have his ult. We are pretty weak. We take a lot of damage right there. So now we're going to try to wiggle our way out. Throw down another beehive to increase the movement speed. If we did not have the beehive, I think that Cronus ability probably would have hit us. So now we're going to go ahead and back and pick up the transcendence. I will consume its power. After going into transcendence, we want to get a little bit of life steal online. So we're going to be going into Aussie. Aussie has some great stats and an amazing passive. It's going to give us some lifesteal, some penetration, some attack speed, and whenever we fall below a certain health you threshold, should, uh, our lifesteal is going to be increased. Don't worry, champ. I'm sure you helped. Can somebody report that guy? So, some of our team is looking to surrender. We are down by six kills, so it looks like somebody is struggling. Cancel that. We're gonna make our way to a camp. Just not sure which one yet. We're gonna go for our purple. So we do not have their wave coming yet, so we're just gonna hit this additional harpy. Throw down a hive so we get every all the good stats that we want. So after we max out the one, we are going to want to max out the I apologize. Once we have maxed out the two AMC's line attack, we're gonna to want to max out his hives because it's going to give us a decent heal, up to 50% attack speed and up to 30% movement speed. Those are some pretty nutty stats when you're trying to face trade or lane trade with somebody. And right there, that was a very preventable death. I went into jungle and just faced the outwards of lane, let them completely just come from behind me and CC me and then eventually get me. So wards definitely would have helped. I had my free ward, I could have placed it, but I feel like just that positioning itself going into jungle and then facing lane, that was probably not the best positioning to have in that situation. So we went into beat because of the Kronos matchup, the Horus matchup, and potentially the Mulan ult. I feel like the beads have paid off while going against the Kronos so far. So our team is looking like they're arguing with themselves. We're going to go ahead and just go left. Let them sort that out. <clears throat> so right now, while I am stacking my transcendence, I really want to be in lane killing minions. If there's a team fight breaking out, it would ideally happen later when I'm fully stacked. 
because I want to try to stack it as quick as possible, which means I need to be in lane farming minions. Your middle tower is under attack. Brutal. Okay. So the minion wave is caught near where their tier 1 tower is. Scylla is a little out of position, we might rotate onto her. She dashes through the wall, she's getting pushed towards us, we're gonna rotate behind her. We throw down our honey, we throw down our two, we get the pick. Horus is here, the team's here, we're going to just keep firing shots, it doesn't look like any of them are focusing us right now. King Arthur, we're gonna go ahead and ult him, there's a double. Mulan ults in. She does not hit us with the knockup. That's a triple. We're gonna go ahead and push the horse. We get the slow off onto him. Unfortunately, our ultimate is on cooldown because that cripple would be very helpful when trying to go after this horse. There is the Bologna too, and I did hit the horse with my ult, but unfortunately it was not enough damage. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to pick it up. Fenrir pushes out the Kronos, and it looks like we are gonna be able to just take this tower. Full Fury is open, Ursula could contest it, but I don't think she'll be able to make it there in time. So that triple kill felt pretty good. That was a very lucky rotation. We saw the Scylla was out of place, she dashed to her side of the jungle, which was out of place, and then our team came and approached her from lane, forcing her to stay in jungle. And then that's where we came from behind and were able to clean her up. And then their enemy team rotated into that little corner in jungle, you, uh, making it pretty easy for our team to just throw a bunch of abilities on them. No so we've almost caught up in kills. We're gonna go ahead and pick up their purple. Get the slow onto the Kronos. Get some damage off, and then we're gonna go back for the minions. Porus is coming up through jungle. I'm not sure if I actually saw him while playing the game. He's behind me. Maybe I could throw down the one to try to get behind. Yep, I see him. So we're going to try to help out this Fenrir by getting some damage off onto the Horus. We're able to deter him. He's going to try to ult away, but we're able to clean that up. We miss our ultimate. That is all right. Destroy. I think we can push this tower pretty easily. So right here I get targeted again because of the B effect. We get our 2 off onto the Mulan. Does a little decent amount of damage, but nothing to scare her away. So we're able to clean up the left tower with our team. Right now we do have a little bit of pressure. It looks like Newell's going to back. Scylla is about in mid. King Arthur is really out of position, but I don't think there's a whole lot we can do from where we are on the map. It's going to take a while to get there. So we're just going to go ahead and back, pick up Aussie, and then we're going to go into Rage. <coughs> Rage is going to allow me to start stacking critical chance whenever I get a kill or assist on an enemy god. So the King Arthur is pretty far out of position, left lane is pushed pretty far, so we're going to go ahead and rotate mid, while our team is rotating right. Immediately fall under tower, because I do not want to fight the Mulan or Horus outside of tower. We're going to throw some beehives in mid, so we get some of those beautiful advantages. We get the stun off, or the slow. We get a basic off, we're able to dodge the Scylla Crush. So we're holding three people in mid. It looks like the Bologna and Fenrir are rotating behind them. We're gonna go ahead and use our one. Fenrir is able to get the pick onto the Kronos. So just the three of us, we're going to push the three of them. That was a beads from somebody. New was able to get a pick, so that's three people down. We should be able to push our structure here. The enemy team looks like they're gonna be pushing the right tower. I'm not exactly sure why Bologna did that. There we go. So I have my hive down, giving me the increased attack speed. So I am actually going to rotate over. Oh no, we totally could have pushed a Phoenix. That was probably a bad play. 
Looks like Nua and Fafnir are still tussling. Mulan's collapsing on them. We're gonna rotate back. I think we probably should have pushed the Phoenix. We had two. We were split pushing pretty well, and I made the call to go for Fire Giant, which was not the right call. Right here, we are in a very particular position. We're gonna use our bees to try to fall back to the back line. We're gonna throw a hive down so we get all the cool stats that we need. Trying to get some basics off, taking a lot of damage from King Arthur. We throw our ult off to try to get some damage. We are going to have to back it up here. To be honest, I don't think anyone's surprised. So I let the team know, like, bye, I'm out of here. So after Rage, we're going to go ahead and try to go into Deathbringer. Deathbringer is going to make it to where all of our critical hits deal additional damage. So ideally, we could get our crit percent chance up to around 90 to 100%, and then we could try to increase the damage on those crits. I don't think I meant to use my honey right there. So we are kind of grouped up with Fenner right here. We're going to... Oh wow, looks like we're going to actually start the Fire Giant, even though King Arthur is in their jungle. We're getting decent damage and Fenner is tanking it for me. King Arthur pulls back, so we definitely should try to get off Fire Giant right here. I don't know why we're staying on it so long. Our team is fighting, and unfortunately, yeah, we could have done something to try to help that Fenner right there. We should have gotten off the Fire Giant. So King Arthur is still an issue, we're going to fight him with Nuwa. Nuwa uses the ultimate, she's able to get out, we use our cripple to prevent him from dashing, and we are able to clean up the King Arthur kill. Mulan is kind of deep in mid, there are two near the fire giant, we're going to hang out, see if we can't get a pick. Still is falling back, we're going to see if maybe there's anything we can do to her. We get a slow off, but that is about it, Mulan is rotating from behind us. We do have a ward on that corner, so that should be pretty helpful to tell us if anyone else is rotating behind us. We throw our line attack, we get some damage off onto the horse. It looks like Scylla is rotating behind us, and that's going to cause us some trouble. Scylla is able to get a pick on us, and I don't think this team fight is going to go very well for our team. So that was a two for one trade in their favor. I don't think they could get Fire Giant right now, but I could be wrong. Another thing to note is that Gold Fury is up. So at this point in the game, we are kind of looking for objectives to secure with our team. That way we can get an advantage and hopefully convert one of those advantages into an enemy Phoenix. Take no prisoners. So, Fenrir or Fafnir was able to get a pick. Horse is moving alongside him in jungle. We're going to go ahead and leave the fountain. Probably going up mid, maybe looking for the gold for the objective. At this point in our build, we could solo gold fury. But that will take us out of the team fight. So we gotta kinda hope that our team just hangs about and doesn't engage anything while I'm off going for gold. Looks like Fenrir is going to come help. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the purple buff just because. Although it probably would be better to get to the gold fury faster and start it sooner, giving the enemy team less time to respawn. Even though I don't think they're actually going to respawn. Three people in mid, so whenever we're done with gold, we're going to want to rotate there and help out. We get the pick onto gold, and it looks like that's going to cause them to rotate into jungle instead of retreating. There's a stun on King Arthur. We get the cripple off so he can't dash away. Lona gets a stun. We accidentally shoot the wall a few times. I'm sure you we are able to get the pick onto King Arthur and I'm able to retrieve my stinger so I will have my ultimate in just a few seconds. We're able to get the pick onto Bologna. 
Now Horus is wiggling around. You uh you gonna start getting kills too or so Horus is running away, he's just trying to waste as much of our time as possible. It's not worth chasing him at this point. So we're going to move up mid. Our team is closing on the Scylla, so there's just the Horus left. We could four man group and push this middle Phoenix. We have around 10 seconds before Mulan gets up. Probably another five for her to get to the Phoenix. So as long as Horus doesn't really stun us, we should be able to burn this Phoenix. I wish this Bologna would attack the Phoenix instead of just kind of standing around. Mulan blinks on us, we're going to have to fall back a little bit here. King Arthur is coming, we're getting some good damage, we got the cripple off. He has a thorn, so that took out a lot of our health, but we were able to back up. And hopefully we can lifesteal off of some of these minions. Fenrir had the same idea. Or, yes, Fenrir. Fenrir and Fafnir in the same yes. game can get a little bit confusing. We're gonna go ahead and go for the Pyromancer. Don't worry, champ. So sure we got a pick. I think we can get for, uh, Fire Giant here. We have enough of our team blocking the enemy team. And I think Bologna and I could take this by ourselves. We pop our beats to avoid the stun. We are able to get the pick onto the Fire Giant. And we're going to go ahead and just back it up. Take the win. No need to chase down the enemy. We have enough money for a Deathbringer, so we're going to go ahead and pick that up. And then we're also going to buy a Sentry Ward. Probably don't need a Sentry Ward right now because we did get gold and we also got fire. What we do need is to group as a team and get one of these Phoenixes down. Now that we have Fire Giant, that should be easier, but we will see. Fafnir is going for purple, so I'm going to go ahead and just go as well, get that bonus attack speed. Bologna is pushing up the left lane, I'm tempted to just push with her, but the enemy team is pushing mid. They're kind of overstepped, so I think there's a lot of damage we could do here. Fafnir ults, turns into his dragon, we're going to get some basics off onto this forest. Forest is going to try to ult away, but we are able to get the pick onto him, so that is two down on the enemy team. Scylla is going to be troublesome if she can defend, so we are going to maybe see if we can split push here. Well, our, look, nope, looks like we're going to go and support our team, but they are throwing a lot of abilities on our team. There's a fat wave in left. It looks like I'm being very indecisive on how I want to play. We're able to get the pick onto the Kronos. Scylla dashes away and is able to melt me down with her root and the damage from King Arthur. But looks like our team was able to clean up the Scylla. Now it's just in King Arthur left. I have faith in the new Apollona combos to take on just the King Arthur. Oh, and a Fafnir. <laughs> King Arthur unfortunately gets the pick onto the new wall. Horus is back up. I think our team should try to back out of that situation. They're very far pushed up, and they are our front line and our back line. Meaning they aren't our damaging characters. Can somebody report that guy? So I think that fell apart from a successful Scylla defense. I think she was able to get a lot of damage off with King Arthur while our team was attacking the middle Phoenix. And while we were indecisive on whether we wanted to go left lane or mid lane. We're gonna make the rotation to gold. The enemy team doesn't seem like they've really gone for that many objectives this game, so I doubt they've gone for it yet. Be careful, 
Yeah. So we're gonna back it up. Looks Easy like their team Enemy is potentially going through the left jungle. We're gonna throw a beehive down so we get that increased heal and movement and attack speed. The enemy team seems to have just entirely disappeared. So we're gonna go and clean up the left lane. Be careful, middle. Really don't know where they went. Pyromancy is down, fire giants down. They might have gone to check them, or they might have been gone to secure their own buffs. No problem. Enemy missing middle. So there's two in mid. We're gonna work our way up the left lane with this Bologna. Now there's three in left. We should be able to push a Phoenix. So if our team can just hold their team near the Pyromancer, we get this left Phoenix. We might lose the team fight, but I think we're going to secure the objectives. Objectives and structures. So it doesn't look like they are aware that we are here at all. So we're going to start working on the Phoenix. Minion wave is about to step in, and now we're doing, we were doing 65 damage, now we're doing 130 damage. Double the damage when the minions are under tower and fountain. We're able to get the left phoenix, and the left phoenix is the ideal phoenix because it is on the opposite side of fire giant. If we were to go to fire giant again, it'd be very handy to have fire minions pushing up the opposite side, forcing an enemy to have to back and go after the fire giants. If we get a pick onto this King Arthur, we'd be in a great position. Unfortunately, we do not. I think we also miss our ultimate. We're going to try to get some basics off. We get a slow off. We're sticking to the horse. We're able to get the pick onto the horse. King Arthur is going to dash away. I don't think it's worth chasing him. He has so many dashes. Yeah. We should be pushing with our team forward. And if King Arthur wants to back, he can back. It is just the Kronos left. So we are going to push this fat wave with our team in the left. Nuo is going to push middle. We might be able to close the game out here. In fact, I'd kind of be surprised if we didn't. And that is all three phoenixes. And it looks like we are going to the end. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out the channel and uh, subscribe for some more videos. If you ever want to request a god or have a smart question, just reach out to me in the comment section or the Discord server. The stats for this game will be posted in a second. I believe this game's gonna end. It's gotta end. I didn't do my outro too early, did I? Oh my gosh, I did. How unfortunate. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do other than just laugh at that situation because it looked like their titan was going down. Unfortunately, they don't. So it's going to take us a little bit of time to respawn. So I'm making the call, let's go for fire, while they have to defend, and they're just like, no, let's just run it down mid and go for the titan. Your middle tower is under attack. It looks like Fenrir might go for speed and then just go for the titan. Nope, he's going mid, he's going to attack the enemy. Nuwa ult is able to get a pick onto the solo. That's a huge pick. We're gonna see if we can't get anything on this horse. King Arthur's here. We ult him, so there goes his dash. Fafnir is able to get the pick onto King Arthur. We're going to push up mid. We're five man stacked. They have two down. I think we can just go straight for the Titan and it not be an issue here. So, as I was saying before, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out the channel. Try to have a guide or a how-to for a lot of the characters and conquests. I believe the stats for this game will be posted at the end. 
Thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.